Mute groups are used so that if we're playing a sample, we can choose whether a second sample will cancel the first one or will play over the top of it. We can demonstrate how that works by using this particular patch bank that I've got set up. It's called the count. We can play each of the samples individually so you can hear what they sound like. I am the count. Do you know why they call me the count? Because I love to count things. That goes on for a little while, so we'll just stop that. It's a good Sesame Street sample there. And then we have other samples. One, two, three, four. Now, obviously, this has been used for the introduction of a song. So what I want to happen is to play the first long sample. I want that to keep going while I play one, two, and three. But when I play four, I want that to cancel the first sample, otherwise that'll keep going while the song plays and that isn't what I want. So to do that, we're going to assign those samples to different mute groups. So to assign the different pads to mute groups within the patch, we first go into Edit. And if you look at the display, it will say Wave A to start off with. We'll use the right arrow a couple of times until it says Pad Control. Then we'll press Enter. And the first thing you see is Dynamics Off. We'll use the right arrow a few times until it says mute group. At the moment it says mute group off. We'll select the pad we want to start with and that's pad number seven. So we'll use shift and right once or we could just tap it to select the pad. And we'll assign that to mute group number one. And we do that by using the plus button. Then we'll choose the next pad that we want to be in the same mute group so that those two pads will cancel each other out. So we'll use shift and right arrow a couple of times until we go on to pad number nine. Remember that was a sample that said four. And again, we'll use the plus button once to put that into mute group one. And you can see from the display that pad seven and nine are both lit up. So that's indicating that seven and nine are in the same mute group. We can test that by playing the sample that's on pad number seven and then tapping pad nine and see if it stops. I am the four. That obviously works. What we'll also do is assign pads four, five, and six to a different mute group so that they will cancel each other out, but they won't cancel out the other pads seven and nine. So we'll select pad number four by using the shift and left arrow. You can see pad four is lit up. And we'll assign that to mute group number two. So we'll use the plus button twice. You see now it's in mute group two, but there's nothing else lit up. We'll then use the shift and right arrow to select pad number five. And again, using the plus button twice, we'll put that in mute group number two as well. Then we we'll use the shift and right arrow one more time to select pad number six. Plus button a couple of times, and that puts that in mute group number two as well. So each of those three pads, four, five, and six, will cancel each other out. And pad number seven and nine will cancel each other out. Now these are quite short samples, so we'll tap them very quickly so you can hear they do actually cancel each other out. One, two, two, three, one, three. And to save that as usual, we'll just press the exit button a couple of times. It says now writing, and we're back to where we started from. Now we have the patch set up the way we want it. So we play this particular sample, then these in sequence, and the last one will cancel the first one. I am the count. Do you know why they call me the count? because I love to count things. One, two, one, two, three, four. So by assigning different pads to different mute groups within the patch, you can choose exactly which pads stop and start other pads and which pads will actually allow a sample to continue playing.